Welcome to Healthcare Design Zone. My name is Ken, and today we're going to discuss NAT or Network Address Translation in Cloud Networking. NAT is traditionally used on edge devices like routers or firewalls to provide internet access to your private networks or used to serve your applications on the internet. So for example, port forwarding or 101 NAT. NAT use cases from a cloud networking perspective are actually a little bit different. So those use cases are usually there to address overlapping ciders or when there are legacy devices configured to use a static IP address for an application that has been migrated to the cloud and therefore that IP no longer exists. Yet you're still asked to make it work. So today we'll go over those use cases and then look at how Alcira's Cloud Services Exchange can address them with our policy framework. When we discuss NAT use cases with Alcira, we really have to think about how the policy is applied relative to the Alcira CXP. So the Alcira CXPs or cloud exchange points are basically networking fabric in the cloud that you can connect on-prem sites like SD-WAN or standard IPsec sites and also connect to your cloud networks using native constructs like Transit Gateway or ExpressRoute. So once these on-prem sites and cloud networks like VPC or VNets are connected to the Alcura CXPs, Alcura's policies can be applied network-wide to them. And part of the, the policy is NAT. So the NAT policies can apply to a single connector or a group of connectors or sites. The NAT rules within the policy will apply to traffic coming inbound from the CXP's perspective and not in the reverse direction would apply if bidirectional translation is enabled. So essentially you have to forget about the inside and outside interfaces in a traditional uh, NAT use case on the router, for example. So you really have to think about what you're matching in terms of traffic coming in from the connector you're applying the policy to. And then those NAT rules will match the traffic flows and then apply the proper NATs that you're trying to accomplish. A NAT policy concatenates multiple NAT rules matching traffic based on the first match. And the last two bullet points are a little more complicated. So if you're translating a branch site to a completely different prefix using source address translation, Valkyra will actually automatically advertise the NAT prefix to rest of the network for you. So this slide shows the different types of uh, NATs that are supported on the Alcura platform. So under source address translation, dynamic IPM port is basically port address translation in a traditional sense, but the context is obviously a little bit different here. Static IP in our case is 101 NAT or dynamic NAT use cases when you want to translate a whole subnet to another subnet or prefix with the same CIDR. For destination address translation use cases, static IP or static IP import is typically used when you only want to expose a select number of, let's say, web servers from a network in the cloud and hide that cloud network's real prefix from your on-prem sites. Static port is similar to a port forwarding use case traditionally. You want to forward a particular port to a different port. Next, we're going to walk through a few real world use cases and then see how they're addressed and configured in the Alcura. So in the first use case, we have overlapping prefixes. So branch one have a 172.16 subnet, but then branch two and VPC one have overlapping subnets of uh, 10. Dot eight, dot one, dot zero slash 24. We're going to use some public prefixes here to make this more obvious. And this is of course not recommended in production. So the requirements are for traffic from VPC one going to branch two, we'll have to not VPC one when that traffic goes to branch two, but for all other traffic from VPC one to branch one or any other parts of the network, we're not going to apply any changes to that. So let's kind of think about what we have to do here. Since these two subnets overlap, what we'll have to do here is we're going to let VPC one remain 10.8.100.0 whenever it talk to any other parts of the network. Then for traffic from VPC one to branch two, we're going to source that 10.8.100 to the 30 subnets. 
for branch two, since it can no longer be 10.8.100.0/24, for all traffic coming from branch two, we're going to source net the traffic to 20.0/24, regardless of you know, where that traffic is going to. So let's see how that can actually be configured in Alcura. What I'm showing here are basically NAT rules that belong to a NAT policy. So specifically, this configuration right here will apply to branch two for any traffic sourced from the 10.8.100.24 going to anywhere. We're going to source NAT it to the 20.0.24 subnet and then we're going to check the flag, match, and invalidate pre-translate source prefix. And what that means is even though branch two is connected to Alkira, Alkira is going to invalidate the 10.8.100.24 that might get advertised by branch two. For BPC one, what we want is we only want to match traffic coming from BPC one, going to the NATed IP of branch two. And then if traffic matches uh, the destination 20.0, which is the NAT IP of branch two, then we're going to source NAT the traffic uh, with the IP of 30.0.0.0 slash 24. However, note that the match and validate pre-translated source prefix is not checked here because we want to advertise on behalf of VPC1, we want to advertise both 10.8.100 slash 24 and the translated prefix to the rest of the network, right? So that for all traffic from VPC one going to, let's say branch one, nothing changes in that perspective. The traffic flow is going to come from 10.8.100.0 going to 172.16.0.0 slash 24. For traffic from VPC going to branch two, that traffic is going to source from 30.30.30.0 going to 20.20.20.0. Here's a second use case for NAT that we heard from a customer that was really interesting. They have a couple of data centers and a large number of retail branches that are utilizing an application in two Azure VNets with subnets of 10.1.1 slash 24 and then 10.1.2 slash 24 as shown here. The retail branches access an application in primary VNet with an IP address of 10.1.1.33 and it's uh, statically configured. The data centers still need access to both of these VNets. The main requirement during failure, which is when the primary VNet is not reachable, is that traffic from all retail locations towards 10.1.1.33 must be netted to the application IP in the back of VNet. And also they um, they're okay with manual intervention, but realistically, right, the last requirement can actually be automated using our APIs to enable the NAT policy when the primary VNet is not reachable, for example. So let's kind of think about it from a NAT perspective. What we want to do is we can either say, okay, we can apply a policy to all of the retail branches and say, for all traffic destined to 10.1.1.33, not 10.1.1.33 to the backup app IP of 10.1.2.55. So that policy will have to be applied to the 2000 retail locations. There's another method that can also address this. We can actually apply a policy to the backup VNet where um, we could NAT 10.1.2.55 to 10.1.1.33, but they enable bidirectional translation. And so that's probably an easier option than applying the policy to all of the retail branches. So let's see how those two methods can be configured. First, this policy will be applied on the back of VNet here. For rule one, we need the rule one so that for all traffic, between the backup VNet and the data center, we don't want to do anything to that traffic, right? And by the way, this is a scenario during failure when the primary VNet is down, right? We want to see what would happen. For rule two, what we want is we want to match all traffic from 10.1 to 55 to anything 
source that it to a static IP of 10.11.33. You can see that by just checking the bidirectional translation, it will allow all of the traffic sourcing from the retail branches going to the back of BNet to also be applied with NAT in a reverse direction, which is 10.11.33, netting it to 10.12.55. Another method to address this, as we mentioned earlier, is you can apply the policy to all of the branches as well. And this one's very straightforward as well, which is you can apply this policy with a rule that says for any traffic from these retail branches going to 10.11.33, we're going to go ahead and net that traffic with the destination IP to 10.1.255 when the primary VNet is down. And note that the flag advertised pre-translated destination IP prefix to select a connector is checked here. What this would do is um, even if the primary VNet is down, Alkira will advertise the 10.11.33 to all of the retail branches if they are using, most, for example, a BGP over IPsec to connect to us. This is, again, I would say a complex scenario that is very elegantly addressed by Alkira's NAT policy. And the last use case, which is one to take a look at a simple use case of port forwarding. In this case, there's a application in a VNet. The service is less than on port 8080. To make it easier for clients, you may want to configure port forwarding so that the users, if they want to access the application, they can simply open a browser to interact with it on port 80. Here we can just go ahead and port forward anything going to that application on port 80 to port 88. And again, this is very easy to configure on Alkira. There's also an alternative method, which is apply policy on the VNet connector here uh, with the reverse translation, just like in the previous example. Once these NAT configurations and translations are configured within Alkira policies, you can also uh, see these NAT translations for the actual flows. If you go into diagnostics inside of the portal, and I will go ahead and demo this later. Now we're going to get into the demo and I'm going to show you a very brief demo. That will be a replica of that uh, overlap prefix example. That was use case one. Here I have a DC one that's a 10.8.1.0 slash 24. And then I have a branch one that overlaps with a VPC in AWS uh, that also have 10.8.100.0 slash 24. We're going to show you on the Alkira portal how the configuration look like, and then also um, show you the diagnostics and the real-time traffic flow. There's a live environment mimicking the topology we showed in the last slide, uh, which we have also used in previous episodes. We have on-prem sites on the left here, so DC1, branch 1, branch 2. And then we have the overlapping AWS VPC showing right here that's connected to US East 2 CXP. And both this VPC and branch 1 have a overlapping subnet of 10.8.100.0 slash 24. So per our use case discussed earlier, let's first take a look at how we configure the policies to address the overlapping prefix here. I go to all policies and I look at the NAT policy that's applied to branch one. Here, we've only selected branch one and you can actually apply the policy to groups of connectors as well using the group tags. And so for the NAT rules, we only have one rule here that matches any traffic coming from 10 late 100.0 slash 24 subnet. And then we are going to source that everything from that subnet to 20.20.20.0 slash 24. And so the last octet, right, won't change. We're essentially dynamically natting 10.8.100 to this 20 subnet. So you'll notice this flag that match and invalidate pre-translated source prefix is checked. What that means is once this flag is checked, the Alkira CXP is going to stop advertising this 10.8.100.0 slash 24 subnet coming from branch one 
even if we see that route being advertised to us. So it's a very useful and nifty feature. From the AWS VPC perspective, the NAT rule is a little bit more specific because we want AWS VPC 1 to maintain the 10.8.100.0 slash 24 subnet when it talks to rest of the network like DC 1. So we only want to match traffic that are coming from the subnet going to the NAT IP of branch 1. We want to source NAT the IP address to 30.30.0 slash 24. So what we're doing here is only for traffic that are coming from VPC one going to the, uh, going to branch one's NAT subnet, then we're going to source NAT IP for traffic that are going to anywhere else on the network. We're just going to leave it be 10.8.100.0 slash 24. And that's the reason this flag is unchecked here because we want the Alcure CXP here to actually advertise both the 10.8.100 slash 24 and the 30 slash 24 subnet on behalf of this VPC. And so we can see this at work if we go to the dashboard view and then we go to visualize routes. And if I go to the corporate segment here, you can see that this 10.8.100 slash 24 is still advertised out of the overlap VPC. Then for branch one, it's advertising the 20.20.20 slash 24 for AWS VPC that that's overlapping, right? It's also advertising the natted prefix of 30.0 slash 24 there. This little hash just means that's a natted prefix. So you can see if I click into this one, it'll say that the original prefix is 10.8.100.0 slash 24, and we're natting it to this 20.0 slash 24 subnet. That's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something new and uh, hope this was helpful for you as well. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.